all, this is WB superstar Sammy Zayn. Selena Vega here. And yours truly the half man, half amazing Montel Montavious Porter MVP. You're listening to Road Trip After Hours with Mac Davis. And Hall of Famer, Teddy Long. With a certified G and a bona fide stud. And I'm not even talking about me, I'm talking about Teddy Long. And my man Mac Davis, how you guys doing? Enjoy the show, guys. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Road Trip After Hours. I'm your host, Mac Davis, along with my WWE Hall of Famer co-host, Mr. Teddy Long. Hey, Teddy, how you doing? They already know who we are. You tell them this each and every week. They already <laughs> know who we are. Why are you being such a repeat? Let's get on to the guest. <laughs> See what I go through all the time. I'm I'm glad we have a guest today because I get to talk to somebody else that might be a little more talkative. And uh, Teddy, who's well, he's our spe- a little more talkative? He's a little more talkative. All right, I see <laughs> that right now. <laughs> Teddy, who is our guest today? Is this somebody you know very well? Oh yeah, man, uh, young man that I watched grow up. Man, I had the opportunity when I first broke into the wrestling business uh, with the NWA National Wrestling Alliance. I was refereeing. And uh, me and his dad hooked up Earl, Earl Hebner, and I learned so much from Earl. And uh, back in the day, I never forget, man, Earl had this big old school bus, and that's what it was. That's what they used to haul a ring on was a school bus. And we have very little money, and we just put our monies together, and we stopped at a store and buy like 50 cents worth of sauce meat and a loaf <laughs> of bread, and that was our lunch, man. <laughs> and uh, we just kept on rolling. So, you know, I went through the struggles there with Earl, and, and, and I taught, he taught me a lot. I learned a lot. And long come his son, Brian Hebner, who's going to be our guest today, and I had a chance, to, like I said, to watch Brian grow all the way up and become another successful uh official in the wrestling business so i ain't gonna you know just talk too much we're gonna get into him and let him tell his own story yeah he is of course as uh teddy just mentioned mr brian hebner and i'm uh, from uh see wwe tna even a stint in aew at one time if i'm not mistaken uh and of course you also got your own podcast brian hebner welcome to the show Thank you guys very much. It's always an honor and a privilege to be anywhere where Teddy Long is. So, um, <laughs> I, 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 thank I, you. I, hey, I woke up this morning. I swear to you, and I said it's going to be a great day because I get to talk and see Teddy Long today, and I, I, I mean it. I mean it. Yeah, so it's, it's always good to have Teddy around because he's good for a laugh for sure. And I, and, and Teddy, I'm looking at uh, Brian right now, and, and and you know how I feel about referees. I've said this many times on this show. For me, the interviews I enjoy the most are with the referees, and there's a reason for that. You guys get to see everything. I, I don't. It's kind of like uh, like you have a little spy camera everywhere because you see more than most people uh, in that locker room and what happens behind the scenes. Was that something that uh, you have a hard time with now since you're not in WWE hiding some of those secrets that were still there? I mean, the thing is, um, uh, being old school, around old school, Teddy Long, yeah. Yeah. my dad, uh, Nick Patrick, uh, I learned very quickly because these guys embraced me, which I was blessed to have been embraced by, um, taught me that basically you you, you don't see anything. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. You, you, you see it, but you don't see it. You know what I mean? And yeah. that was a very important thing for a young guy like me to learn. Uh, Teddy Long also taught me things like shut your mouth, learn when to talking when not to and and nine times out of ten the not talking was the bigger portion of what we learned or what i learned from my veterans and 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 it's so true and i always go back to when i talk to young referees or i'm training referees i always go back to teddy and and i always tell them this because it's very important because when you're young dumb and full of all that other stuff um it's so easy to run your mouth because you're immature you don't get it and it's only one word you can say that just completely could destroy your, your career. So it's better to not say things than it is to say things. Uh, you know, being from the family, you, you got your father, Earl Hebner, who's been a guest on the show. Uh, we just ran a show actually just last week, uh, reminding people about that interview. And uh, you, you grew up in a family where this is business. This is the family business. Are there people behind you right now? I know you've got a sister or stepsister maybe, or something that's uh, also doing some officiating somewhere. Is that right? Well, yeah, I got um, my stepsister, Katie. Um, yes. I, I don't know where she's at in her career in the wrestling world. I, I'm just being honest. Uh, yeah. uh, I know that she had made several attempts to be in, you know, a referee and a, a worker and all that stuff, and I don't know where she's at right now with that. Um, but I do have a son. Uh, his name is Trevor. 
And he's uh, in college. He's playing baseball at Mary Baldwin. Uh, very athletic kid. He's a much bigger guy than I am. Um, but he he kind of feels like he wants to do it. And I'm kind of thinking like he shouldn't do it uh, because, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I just know how much stuff I missed. Now, don't get me wrong. Yes. I love this business with all my heart. I, it's given me everything in life, including my children. Um, but it's just something that I think that if he can get an education first, finish his college and figure out if it's something that he really wants to do when he starts seeing that green that he's making, yeah. um, if it's worth what me and Teddy and my dad and all of us had to go through to make the money we made, because you know, if, if, if you could just take me and transplant me in a ring and let me do my thing, I'd still be doing it. Oh yeah. 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 It's, I'm it, surprised it, you're not doing it. That's going to be one of my questions. Why are you not full-time somewhere right now? Honestly, man, I, I, it, it, it's my, my choice. Um, no one forced me out. Um, actually, when I went to the powers that be, they didn't believe me. They said I was lying. Oh, and I said, I'm not lying. Um, I gave him the date of when I wanted to finish up through my contract, which was yep. bound for glory. Uh, he said, uh, could, he do, could I do some additional ones? And I said, I'll do what you need me to do before I leave, but I am leaving. Um, and the reasons for me leaving had nothing to do with anything about wrestling itself. It had everything to do with my family. Um, I became... Um, What's the word? I guess ultra mature. And I know what I did to my son. And by, by that, what I mean is uh, missing birthdays and missing Christmas yeah, and yeah. missing his ball games. And I could see the hurt in his face, you know, as, as, I, as he grew up. But he kind of understood because he was a boy and he was like, that's my dad. He's doing this cool shit. Look, he's on TV, guys. You know, just that, that. Oh, he's main event in WrestleMania, yada, yada, yada. My girls didn't get it like that. They didn't get it. They didn't understand, Dad, you just came home. Why are you leaving? You're going to miss our softball game. You're going to miss this. And I, I, I'm telling you, when you see girls cry to you and they're your daughters, I'm about to cry right now. I'm talking about it. I swear. Uh, but well, I, I was about to ask you, to be honest, uh, listening to you right now, it sounds like that's still something you carry a burden with a little bit. And, and a lot of guys in the business go through this because – the the only way to be successful is to be away from your family. At least at the time that you were, especially in wrestling, you had to be on the road. Yep. Yep. But I just, you know, it, to me, it's not all about money all the time. Yeah. And I, I was fortunate enough to do what my father told me to do is save all my pay-per-view checks. I never cashed one of them things in. Uh, I lived off the money I was making, just my regular pay, which was plenty. Don't get me wrong. I was yep. treated very fairly and sometimes felt overpaid. Um, but I'm just fortunate I can walk away because a lot of people can't. And I'm in great shape. Um, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not hurt and banged up over it. Um, I can walk around and get up with no problems. And I look at my dad and no disrespect to him. He, he's a warrior. He's a warrior. He is. I, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be going to these conventions, chasing money and chasing stuff like that. I don't, I don't want to. I want to be at home. I want to be with my kids. My son's got a game tonight. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there probably an hour before he, the game starts <laughs> just, so I can, just so I can get planted somewhere where I can see everything. You know what I mean? And he loves that. He looks over and sees his dad, and that means the world yeah, to that kid. So, and it means the world to me. And I that, that's simply what happened. I just decided it was time. I've done everything. I've worked for every promotion and major in the U.S. I've done it all, you know? So that's just how I felt. Teddy, you want to hop in here? Well, I was just listening to Brian, and it's a whole lot of truth to uh, what he's saying there, man. You know, you got to be able to let this go and uh, be able to walk away. And a lot of guys are not able to do that. You know, they get caught up in it by, by you know, people recognizing them from TV. Well, once they go off TV, see, they miss that. So, and they let that get to them. You, you got to understand that everything, nothing is secure. Nothing is forever. Summer changes the winter. It's just that simple. So you got to understand that one day this life is going to be over. You got to step away. So be prepared when you step away. Like I said, it don't bother me. I never called WWE TNA nobody for a job because I don't care. I don't want no job. I'm 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 enjoying the rest of my life. I'm so yes. glad that God is keeping has kept me alive. I've been there. I've done that. I made it to the Hall of Fame. The only, only other place I could go is I'd have to learn how to wrestle and become world champion. <laughs> so I don't have any intentions on doing that. <laughs> well, all right, all right. Now let me ask you this: Vince was somebody you worked with quite a bit uh in his matches in fact it seemed almost as if you were the hand chosen one for every one of his matches uh, that he would have in the ring how much pressure were you under being that official for that match with vince um i'll, I'll be honest you're kind of young still in the business at that point yeah. Are you not? yeah i was very very young um i felt like i was very green um and uh 
to put it this way, I, I was young and I didn't have that pressure. I, I, I had I, nothing could hurt me. Nothing could do anything. So I wasn't scared. Yeah. The biggest scare I got was with the Hogan Vince match because I was there a week before, had papers this thick to go over. I was studying. I was in the green room. Um, it was not just your regular match. It was beyond that. Yeah. And it was WrestleMania, and it was the first time ever we had a Vince Hogan match. So, yes, the butthole was puckered, and um, the stress and um, age got to me there. That's where it was like, okay, you young buck, you think you know everything. You think that you can't get hurt. You think, oh, well, it all set in that day. Uh, as the as the hours became ticking down, it was just like, holy shit. I'm Were there ready. any bumps during the match that we don't know about that uh, actually happened or something that went off script? Well, the only thing that went bad that made me look bad, uh, <laughs> thanks, Vince, um, we, we went over it. We went over it. I had to take a bump, and he was going to pick me up, and he was going to throw me over the top rope. So I'm prepared to go over the top. He even said, you sure you can take this bump? I said, you just put your hand in the back of my head and just push me that way, and I'll take the best bump you've ever seen in your life. I'm prepared. We even went over it. He, he's, uh, Shane, you know how sick Shane is. Shane oh, was yeah. like, you, you want to practice? And I'm like, I don't want to practice a bump. No, not really. <laughs> um, but I did because I was dumb, and I took this hellacious bump in the green room. Vince loved it, started clapping, and everything was clear. Well, when it happened, he picks me up. I'm ready to go over the top, and he forces me through the middle. <laughs> so I take this stupid bump and never make it out and come back in. Then he picks me up, and then I go out the middle. And that wasn't on me. That looked bad for me, but it wasn't on me. I was ready to take this sick-ass bump, man. Like, seriously, I was going to just slip in the air and just – I mean, I was – it was going to be sick, but it didn't happen. But it was cool. <laughs> You moved over to the TNA uh, after your time. And, you, you know, your your father and your uncle uh, were let go by WWE, and it seemed like within an, a year, maybe maybe less than that, that uh, you were there and you were kind of gone. You were faded away, too. But you came back, and uh, TNA seemed to be your home. You know, we were just talking to Matt Cardona on our last episode, and I had mentioned to him that I knew him more as Matt Cardona than I ever did as Zach uh, Ryder, just yeah. from what he has done. And honestly, I didn't really know you until you got to TNA. Even though you did those big matches in WWE, Hogan and Vince, you know, I didn't really know who you were until you got the TNA. And I don't know if it was because it was a better environment or what it was, but I swear you looked like you were having fun. That was the best time of my life ever. Um, I, that's why I also chose to retire from TNA. That being my, my, my last stop. Uh, I was in the NWA prior and I was on a multi-contract when Ring of Honor was still there. I was working both Ring of Honor and NWA, which is very unique. Yeah. And um, I wanted during COVID, I wanted to get on my contract and go to, back to TNA and have my last run. Didn't know how long. I just knew I was going to finish up there. Uh, Billy Corgan wouldn't let me out of my deal at NWA. And um, I had to finish that deal out before I could get back with TNA. And I was scared that that was going to ruin me coming back because it was going to be, a you know, about a year. Yeah. And um, he offered them some ridiculous amount of money that he wasn't paying me for them to buy out of my contract. And I was negotiating with uh, D'Lo Brown and D'Lo had said, look, just hang tight. I got you, dog. Just let this thing ride out. Do your thing. And I promise you, you'll have a spot. And I just had to believe him, you know. So I, I finished my dates with NWA and, and, and went over to TNA. And um, that was my second term with TNA. That first one, though, was the one that was the, the, the best, the best. And this last one was awesome, too. I, I felt sad to leave, man. Um, I, I don't know if you saw the footage, but uh, yeah. they, they tricked me all day. They flew me in, and I was there all day. We had matches like for three shows it was like bunches of matches i had one match and i'm like what's going on here i was like i can do more guys tell me how <laughs> so they had me pegged in for the main event well kazarian and um motor city machine gun uh sorry i can't think of his name right this second but anyway um they wanted me to do that match they wanted me to do that match and frankie was not even in tna uh, as a full-time he was with uh AEW. yes he he wanted that to be where he won the title and he wanted me to be the one that Hit the one, two, three for him. And it meant the world to me. And then they, everybody cleared out of the locker room and came out of the ring. And I cried like a little bitch. And uh, it was crazy, man. But yes, TNA is the place I loved. And that's where my, my heart is, honestly. All right. I got to ask you about this because I did see something uh, that hit the, uh, the dirt sheets when you had made a comment about Samantha Irving and her announcing. Yes. Now, explain for those who have not heard, what is your opinion from, your viewpoint about Samantha Irving and her announcing. 
I have no problem with her. That's where everybody took it wrong. I have that's no problem with her. I think she's a wonderful lady. And if everybody I've talked to, she's a great human being. That wasn't what I was saying. Yes. What I was saying is I didn't like her style of announcing. That's all yeah. I was saying. Yeah. I'm old school. She's new school. I don't get this over the top yelling um, when you're trying to say someone's name. She's gifted at what she does. If that's what you like. I personally don't like it. I wanted to voice my opinion and caught holy shit for it. Well, you know what? I have an opinion and I'll continue to give my opinion and don't give two shucks. Uh, sorry, Teddy. I know you love that. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I kind of understood that too. When I saw it, I was like, you know, because people made it personal. Well, uh, smart, it, 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 Mac, smart people got it. It was the yes, dumb idiot trolls yes. that didn't get it, who they can just go sit on an egg and let it hatch. And, and, hope and they those are something. usually the ones you see on Twitter. And, yes. I, and I'm sorry, but that's just the truth. Those who comment down below more times than not are, are the ones that, uh, you know, are just looking to kind of get themselves over in the comment section. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I, I was surprised when I, I saw him go after you that way because I knew what you meant. But I saw that you took a lot of heat and it just really I thought was unnecessary. Um, let me ask you just a couple more things real quick before we run out of time because I'm, I'm actually running a little bit behind already. Um did you, during a match, whether it was in WWE or TNA, did you ever break kayfabe where you just in the it broke down laughing in the ring? Something happens that you just, you had to break character? Have you ever worked with Tony Chimmel? Uh, no, <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> what what kind of things happened with you and Tony? It wasn't me. It was the boys that would do stuff. Um, and I'm in the ring and we're doing TV. And they're untying his shoes and it, 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 I, the list goes on. It's, it's so many things that, <laughs> but yes, I have broke kayfabe and I've actually had to remove myself out of the hard camera into a safe corner. Um, Teddy Long was one of those guys that taught me what the lights were. I knew where the lights were at and I knew where to go to where it was safe. And I would during sure get in that corner <laughs> and pop. Yes, I would. <laughs> 100. But man, now look, I know being on the road uh, as much as you were, you got to have some road stories. You got to have something. I do. Uh, where you want me to go? I, take it anywhere you want to go, brother. Wide open. Well, I think one of the the, the funniest ones that I could think of was that uh, me and the couple of the boys we went to a bar. What a shock, right, Teddy? A bar. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we had this fan who just basically was shitting all over what we did. Um, I was controlling the boys, believe it or not. I was at a mature level, and it was me that was saying, guys, don't worry about it, da 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 And I had some tough guys with me, and I don't want to mention them because I don't know if they want to be in this story or not, but, and, and I'm not like that. I don't you know, yeah. do that. Um, but I got this now, and I said to the fan, I said, what do you think of wrestling? He said, I think it's a, it, I think it's a bunch of shit, and it's fake. I said, you think it's fake, huh? He said, yeah. And I said, tell me why you think it's fake. Well, they have trampolines they land on. I mean, this is how ignorant this guy was. They got trampolines they land on. Um, they hit their leg. They do this. They do that. I said, all right. Well, I'll tell you what. Let me show you how fake it is. Are you cool with that? And he's, he's, he's half drunk. And I'm like, he's like, yeah, man. I mean, yeah. I said, so I'm going to be fake. And I'm going to tell you right now. And you could do what I do back to you. And I'm going to let you do it first. I said, because we're just faking here, right? And he's like, yeah. I said, okay. I said, pull my shirt up. And I said, go ahead and chop me. Chop me. So he rears back and he chops me. The worst, weakest, cheap, like pop. <laughs> it was terrible. Didn't hurt. Good. It was nothing, nothing. I said, okay, so now we're aware this is fake. And he's like, oh, yeah. So I went and grabbed one of my buddies who knows how to chop very well. He walks over there and raises his shirt up and chops the living shit out of him in that bar. <laughs> they cut the music in there. They did everything. This guy, <laughs> this guy said to all of us, he's sorry. Wrestling is the real deal. And you have just taught me a valuable lesson. I either stop drinking or stop calling your business fake. <laughs> How, about both? How about both, buddy? Very <laughs> good. Yeah, it's just a, that's a fun one. You know what I mean? I don't, you know, no, I have a lot of the, good ones. You, uh, your podcast, uh, you have a partner that uh, has already been on this podcast uh, ahead of you, and that uh, we'll, we'll talk about in just a minute. But tell us about your podcast, when you started this podcast. Now, I guess, Brian, were you initially by yourself on this podcast? Was this a solo yes. podcast? Okay. How far back does this podcast go? My podcast is now two, a little over two years old. Um, and a guy named RJ, who's my co-host, called yep. or DM me on, t on Twitter. I ignored him for almost like eight months, but he kept 
coming hard at me, coming hard. And I finally responded to him and he pitched the idea about doing a podcast with me. And um, so that's what we did. We started like that. And it was terrible. It was terrible. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know how to talk on a forum like this. Um, it was terrible. But we got really good. We got really better and started, you know, getting a, yeah. you know, a pattern, a pattern together. And then one day um, I thought to myself, you know what? I'm more the new school still at this point. I wanted to mix in an old bag of an old school guy. And I immediately thought about Jimmy Cordares. And I had a Jimmy about a year ago because now it doesn't matter how old or young our guests are. We can cover them with some knowledge. Oh, yeah. uh, so we've had old guests on there uh, like, uh, you know, um, a bunch, a bunch of just guys I'd yeah. never worked with, never worked with at all. And Jimmy had Jimmy had been in the Fed when when these guys were working. Um, so it just works out for us uh, with Reffin it up. It just works out where Jimmy and me can kind of go off each other with whoever the guest is like Teddy Long. We both got to work with him. Ted, so so Jimmy now has his stories. I've got my stories yeah. and we can all get together and it comes together. So it just made more sense to have a three man booth for me. Yeah, I, I enjoy the program. I know who RJ is. I've known RJ for a while as well. And uh, it, it is a fun podcast. It's interesting. I think I told you the other day, too. I, I said, listening to you and Jimmy, it's like good cop, bad cop. You know, yeah, Jimmy's the good cop, and you're the you're the mean, nasty, bad cop when you got to yeah. be because you're the one with the spit and fire that seems to come out. Are there times when Jimmy actually loses his cool? Man, it's the funniest thing when he does. It's not often, but but it is. Uh, he got he, he got so mad when Tony Khan said on air that referees don't matter. No one oh, cares shit. about ref. No one cares about referees. Jimmy lost his shit. He flipped. He flipped out and he started dropping f bombs. Teddy, can you believe it? <laughs> wow! Uh, it got him hot. It got him hot. Well, and, uh, I don't. Well, I don't blame him. Jimmy Coderas has been with um, some of the greatest in, in this business, and he knows. So how can you say something so disrespectful like that? I agree. And, I, and, and Brian, you led me right into something I wanted to ask you about, too. Today's uh, working with the referees and the ring, and especially the work of them in AEW, uh, that has to be a little frustrating for you because you're a little more old school when it comes to th th the officiating of a match and certain things that do or shouldn't happen. Uh, in AEW is so free. I, you were there for a, a brief time. Was it because you couldn't just didn't gel or what was the deal? Well, all right. So there's that's a two part of there. Yeah, yeah the I'm way. sorry. Yes. Well, the thing is with the, with the referees over there, okay, and I'm not talking about every one of them, and, and I don't care what people think, what I say, and if they don't like it, they can don't have to listen, and it's just that simple. Yeah. Um, right. They're there for themselves. They think they're stars. They think that they're bigger than the boys, and that's a huge problem, and that's a, that's a huge problem you're going to have. These referees that work for AEW will never work anywhere else that's out there if they lose their job, none of them, because they've got it too far wrong. No one is paying a ticket to see them. No one. And if they are, they're an idiot. Yes. And the only time anyone's ever came to see me with a ticket is when I gave it to them for free. Okay. No one's ever paid to see me referee. So the biggest thing I have with that is that there's no one to re reel these guys in and girls in. There's no one to answer to in the back. So they can act like idiots. And when I say that, I mean it. I got, we got one referee that sells everything more than the boys. Just dancing and prancing around it's yeah. it's 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 comical but it's stupid and it doesn't need to be there they have tag matches that mean nothing because they don't enforce the rules you got right. guys that are fighting outside for 20 minutes of the show and the match inside of it where you get paid where people want to see you is in the ring for three minutes you know I, I, it's just frustrating and it's no, just, no and i understand that because teddy and i uh teddy won't watch it i do watch it uh i say i watch it i don't blame you teddy that i don't blame you uh yeah. But it, it really, to me, it's scattered uh, without the rules and the officiating being what it should be. How does a heel, and Teddy will yell at me because he'll say there's no heels anymore, there's no faces anymore, but I still want good guys and bad guys. I want to know who's good and who's bad and who needs to get their ass whipped. And uh, it, in their programs, it's pretty much, hey, guys, we got a great lineup of matches for you tonight. Watch. And that's pretty much all you get. The referees do not matter, and they stand out way too much. You're absolutely correct. And they got other problems. They need people. that. Well, they got people. Teddy has said this before. There are plenty of people backstage that know better, 
It's just somebody is not listening to the advice that they could be getting from these guys in the back who know. Hey, back up. Honestly, they're, they're not giving them any advice. Okay. They're just doing like the old school, like they've been doing for 50 years. Hey, good job, guy. Good job. That's great out there tonight. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's what they're doing, man. All they, 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 they're there just to get a paycheck. And, that, and that's the thing, Teddy, Mac. It, it, here, here it is. It's people that are lucky to have a job. It's people that are getting paid way more than they deserve. And they're going to agree to say whatever Tony says, and that's what it's going to be. No one's going to buck this man. No, no one's going to buck him. No one. So if, if, if you're a referee and you're trying to be a star, if Tony doesn't think it matters, why are they going to change? True. <laughs> why are they going to change? If, I, if he hired me right now and said, you're in charge of all the referees, they would probably quit. They'd probably quit. <laughs> and I'm being dead. Well, I'm being dead serious. But but, well, I, but well, I agree. It needs to happen. They would need to quit if they didn't want to do it right. Then That's let them go. Then don't don't even give them a chance to quit. Fine. Yep. Exactly. Man, what is Ted, that? A twenty count on the outside if they go outside or uh, something it's, like it's, that. It's, uh, you know. Hey Teddy, when we, when we were mess up and we had to go backstage and we knew we messed up, how did that? How did that make you feel, Teddy? Made me feel pretty bad because I know the man was waiting on me. Absolutely, I was right. told. I was told one time, Brian, when you're done, come see Vince in my earpiece. Ooh. Okay, that's the kind of stuff we we had to deal with. That's what we right. had to deal with. Ramifications for not doing a job correctly. These and if folks, you and, and if you've done something real bad, as soon as you hit that you curtain, gone. Vince was standing up. He's waiting on you. Yeah, with them glasses slammed down to the table. Yeah. I mean, but 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 I don't think it has to be quite to that extreme. But my point being, there should be there. Should, well, I don't have a problem with that either. <laughs> well, you, 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 me neither, Brian. And you know what? I don't care about that. You know, Vince made did made a man out of me. He did the right thing. You know, I, he never got on me, but a couple of times. But that was all I needed because I understood exactly what he wanted and who he was. So by him getting on me didn't bother me whatsoever. It let me know, oh, okay, I got to straighten my ass up here. This this ain't no nothing to play with. Right. So he helped me out. Thank you, sir. And there, and Teddy, there's a difference between teaching and learning and listening, which is not happening. That's not happening. No. I mean, right. so, some of them don't even know how to work the hard camera. Still. Right. I mean, it's just <laughs> Teddy had that problem learned, just recently. <laughs> and you learned that from back in the day. I never will forget. J.J. Dillon told me one time this was straight out of his mouth. Keep your ass out of that hard camera. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> I learned that back in the 80s with NWA. Well, Brian, I know we're out of time. And uh, plus, uh, you got to get to a, fo- I mean, a baseball game. So I'm going to let you get out oh, of here. So now you, oh, so now you want to relax like, like now you care about Brian getting to his baseball game. But <laughs> Look here. I, I can keep talking. Trust me. <laughs> I got plenty of questions for you. <laughs> but uh, we can save those for another time. Tell us again how everybody finds your podcast. Where can we find you? Well, you can find my podcast on all pl- pl- uh, podcast platforms. Sorry. Easy for you to say. No, no, no there was a double one there. Um, <laughs> but, yes, it's uh, called Reffing It Up with Brian Hebner. And, of course, we do have uh, Jimmy Corderas on there, my co-host, RJ. And we drop usually – sometimes it switches because of the talent. Uh, but it usually drops every Wednesday at 9 o'clock. Um, it's a fun, happy listen. We don't get in the dirt. We don't do any of that stuff. Uh, we want to have fun. We want our guests to have fun. And um, I'm having a blast with it. And uh, you can also catch me on Instagram and Twitter at Baby Hebner. Uh, so make that very simple, too. If you're a troll or you want to mess with me on it, um, I suggest you don't do that because I do fire back and I don't give a shit what I say. So watch it. Uh, <laughs> Great. Well, that, that, that should get you more uh, more comments just from saying that. Right? They, they'll come after you right yeah. now. <laughs> hey, man, I, I have tough skin, man. I have yeah. tough skin. <laughs> All right, Teddy, we got to get out of here. Anything you want to say before we go? Oh, man, I just want to thank, you know, before we go, I just want to thank Brian for taking the time to come on with us, man. This, I thought, was a great show. A lot of knowledge was uh, yeah. explored here today. And so, once again, Brian, thank you so much, man. And don't forget, anytime me and Mac can do anything for you guys, just let us know. Yes. Absolutely. And it meant a lot for me to be on here, man. I couldn't wait. And uh, when Mac reached out to me, it was a 
Yes, right away, right or wrong. It, it was immediately. <laughs> yeah, 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 which is, so. is nice, and and I appreciate that very much. Uh, like I said, the, the referees have always been good, especially for this show, uh, because of the stories and the views that you have. Because I mean, let's face it, we hear how many stories you're going to hear from the wrestlers that all basically are the same, and they're telling it from a wrestler's perspective. To get it from an official is completely different. You're hearing stories you might not ever hear again. So make sure you go to his podcast, listen to him, listen to the interviews they do. It is a fantastic show, Brian. It really is. Well, thank you guys very much. I really do appreciate it. And uh, if y'all ever want to jump on mine, I'd love to have you on. I know you were on that long, Teddy, but I can. we could do it once a month. I don't care. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, we'll work right on that, man. Don't worry. All right. Well, I love you guys, man. Thank you very much. Brian, right. thank you very much. This has been Road Trip After Hours. I'm your host, Mac Davis, along with WWE's Hall of Famer, Mr. Teddy Long, and our special guest, Mr. Brian Hebner. We'll see you again next week.